Zorba. So it was you behind the attack? Indeed it was. I killed the prince, though he died all too easily. And the odd thing was, his aura felt awfully similar to yours. So I decided to bide my time a while and listen. And it's a good thing I did. There really is something stranger going on. Who are you? Are you the prince or not? Whatever your answer, I must report back to Lord Luis. Do you have any idea what Luis is really scheming? If he becomes king, everyone in this country is doomed. If that is what Lord Luis so desires, then I shall see it done. It's almost impressive how blind your faith in him is. I suppose it's just easier to follow instead of thinking for himself. He's forgotten anything he really wants. What do you intend to do? The crown is too heavy a burden for your reedy frame. Lord Luis is the true king, who will save the worthy. And you are nothing but a powerless imposter, only fit to be sacrificed. He is no imposter, fiend. His Highness has finally taken his first steps on the road to victory. Here, at his journey's end, after enduring these countless hardships, he has become a true successor, a true ruler. Because he knows the people's suffering firsthand. <laughs> well, imposter or not, it's all the same if he's a corpse. And so I shall return the prince and his dying legacy to the underworld where they belong. Bastard! I wondered why you ran away, but it was all to lure us straight to this monstrosity. Keep your guard up. The Melancholia is fueling his magic power. We've come too far to be stopped by something like him. Let's put our power on full display. This guy shows up again just when we've unlocked some new power. Kind of feels like fate by now. Okay, time for a new fight. Stay on your toes. All right, let's take it down and then get after Zorba. Hot. <laughs> Ninja! It's up to you now. This'll be this is just what I need. Purified. Shield. We've got to do something about those apples. Let me handle those apples. Leave it to me! Now it can't heal itself anymore! Don't waste your chance! Get in there! I call upon royal power within! Now let's get on with it!
The bastard got away. I say, you chaps boggle the mind. It's no mean feat to fight on even footing with a human. Hmm, I'd hoped as much. You may yet have the power to face Luis at his full strength. It's good to see you're safe. We've certainly taken these powers a long way. Maybe we thought ourselves invincible, but don't worry. At long last, the prince is safe. In a manner of speaking. Everything's going according to plan. Still, what's our next move? The people think you are monster. We'll not find any public backing like this. Alsace once said that His Highness the Prince was a soul born into adversity. He is royalty and elder both. Heir to the legacies of heaven and earth. He is water and fire in condemned conflux. When the day comes that His Highness may be revered as the good ruler he can be, then the world will truly be free of prejudice. And that, he said, is why we fight. In his own words, huh? We have to fight for what he believed in. All the more reason we can't turn from this. Right. Come what may, my life is a shield raised in your highness's name. Are you prepared to fight Luis to the bitter end? We fight him together. Yes. By our efforts, we will stop at Luis's reign. If he ends up king, he'll be sending all traitors to the gallows. Not just us, but any innocent folks he doesn't find use for. <sighs> Look, I'm never giving up hope either, okay? All we have to do is beat him, right? That's about what it comes down to, yes. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy. But we work best under pressure anyway. You... <laughs> I'm still amazed. You really do look just like your mother. Truly. You are a child of fate. Your mother, she loved your father, and you, with all her heart. The injustice that befell this village is not your fault. But listen well. Once you leave this village, you cannot return until you have fulfilled your ambitions. After all, an old crone like me can't take care of you forever. If you want to overcome your hardest challenges, you'll have to face them yourself. The world's fate is in your hands. Please, put an end to the tragedies of humankind's failures. Thank you, and for everything. Our final battle lies ahead. We cannot lose. Yet, before all else, His Highness has only just awoken. Let us rest in the Gauntlet Runner for today, and advance to the Royal Capital tomorrow. It's a bit strained, isn't it? I was convinced we'd been together for a long time. But I can't believe we've only just met. The beginning of my journey may have been a false memory. But my journey with you and the memories we've made, those are all real. Oh, <laughs> guess I'm repeating myself. But I'm glad we're working together. Likewise, I'm glad to be your ally. Yep. Though, I guess our toughest challenge is next. The mystical fairy, Gallica. She who still keeps the virtues of the mage. We've got the path to tomorrow in front of us, and I'm gonna lead the way. When things get tough, remember this magic. The music meant for you will play in your head. By the way, the Chief Test told me something about your novel. A 
Apparently, your parents gave you that book when you were still just a kid. I wonder what your parents wanted you to get from reading it. What they hoped for you, I guess. I suppose you'll have to find out for yourself. <sighs> the part we're reading today is... the last chapter. It's about the ruler of this ideal world. Let's read it together. The last chapter is about the ruler of a utopia. The one who governs this utopia must have an unwavering will. To maintain justice in this world, there are innumerable obstacles to overcome, yet, as long as one lives by their ideals, those who support them are sure to follow. A utopia is not the creation of a single mind or a single power. It is a world shaped by all its people. The last part sounds a little more metaphorical. Hmm? There's a little more. However, even a utopia may one day fray at the edges, and its people may come to conflict over the question of what is right. What is a true utopia? What is a true ruler? None have yet found the answers to these questions. <sighs> so even the author of this book struggled with these questions. And if you become king, you'll have plenty of tough questions and struggles to face yourself. Lady Gruadae mentioned the king was a real idealist when he first arrived at the village, but little by little, the pains of reality crushed his hope, and he even lost his son. In the end, his will was broken. He didn't lift a finger to stop the church's rise to power. With that in mind, I can honestly see why people would be drawn to Luis. His values are radical and cruel, but he's devoted to them. Unshakable, even. But we can't lose either. For the sake of everyone who has believed in us along the way. Right. You've got the power to change the world. And the one who gave it to you was... Well... Yourself. And that's what I'm going to help you with. That's my mission. My real mission. And I'm going to see it through. found a way to unequivocally shape your destiny. As far as I know, there is no record of your newly acquired archetype ever being used, even in ancient times. An archetype whose existence was only theoretical, known to some scholars as the magic of true sovereignty. Indeed, a power of legend. I once said that to be elder was your inescapable fate. However, it seems the truth was more complex than that. Magic is a process by which we confront fate and tame anxiety. And archetypes are its essence. They are manifestations of a resolve capable of heroic virtue. So then, what do you think is the foremost, most inescapable fate a person must bear? The foremost fate? I'm not really sure, but... For me to be me, and for you to be you, or something like that. Indeed, it is birth that is inescapable. You cannot choose who you are born to, and once your familial place is determined, that fate cannot be changed. Yet by some strange tangle of destiny, you were given a choice that the very act of existence denies most people. By your own will, you were born again. 
As a prince, do you understand? You stand on the threshold of truly becoming a ruler. Not as an unearned title of bloodline's chance, nor as a mere authority over people. You have taken control of your life. You are ready to rule your very self. That is what it truly means to be a hero. And it is the crux of the power that has awakened within you. <laughs> what glorious coincidence indeed, that I, as a scholar of archetypes, might cross paths with and witness such a remarkably fated boy. It almost bespeaks... Indeed. Tis his hands that bear our fate. Who? I, I remember. I know that I know this voice. Had I forgotten it all this time? Yes. I swear I've heard it before. And I... I let it slip from my mind. Who are you? You with this voice that moves hearts. Speak! Who are you? Why have you awakened this boy to his power? If it is answers you seek, then go and claim them. Are you... Could you be? As for you, I bid thee awaken. Move onward to thy final ordeal. Take thy place at the final proving of the Ascension of Kings. <sighs> Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Okay, all our preparations are just about set. Now that this is actually happening, I've got some pre-show jitters. All this royalty? I always felt they lived in a different world to the likes of me. Never figured I'd be walking alongside one myself. Tis proof that Bloodline decides nothing. We are one people living in a shared world. Looks like this is gonna be our last mission. Any final words you wanna say? We can't give up. Stand strong to the end. Of course. No way we're losing here. I've got the fire in me eyes now. About the new stuff you've felt and learned since becoming the prince. Can I ask you one more thing? Why is it that you want to be king? It's not about honor or power, is it? I want to protect this country and its people. Tis the answer I hoped for. As your knight, I will ever so- Well, I guess this means we're ready as we're gonna be. Ugh, come- This place here. Alright. Uh, hold on. This place here. Let's move. You see? After having made so many sacrifices, the group has gained new powers and ascertained new truths. Their arch enemy, Luis, already has one hand on the throne. Even so, they march ever forward, spirits rekindled by battle. They head to Grand Trad, for the fight is far from over. That Elden boy is nowhere to be found. I suppose it's only a matter of time until Luis takes the throne. Speaking of which, I don't see the General. The voice of the pro-Luis faction became too overwhelming. He was ultimately forced out of his position. Why is this happening? Even if the Sanctus Church's favor has collapsed, why is it that Luis alone is reaping the benefits? The public mind is the same as it's always been. 
It's too difficult to find answers in themselves, so they follow those who provide. We've certainly relied on that ourselves. It's always easier to follow than to have to make all the risks yourself. Now that we are out of ideas, what can we do? Can you imagine Luis on the throne? Can you imagine what he'd do with us? We'd be the first on the chopping block. Do we hide? Run? Our ships are in port. Is this really the time for idle chit-chat? Who are you? Just a passing wastrel. Thought I'd drop in for a word since I was in the area. You might have one way to survive. Well then, let us depart. Lord Luis, your pardon. We've encountered an unexpected snag. I killed the prince in the Elven village. I confirmed his death, yet it appears the boy candidate has merged with his corpse. It seems the prince is now resurrected. Resurrected? Yes, and what's more? The boy candidate was the actual prince after all. Something about his soul having traveled independently and then returning to his corporeal body. I see. So his ideal form was spun from Magla. Whatever the case, this means the land's true prince has reawakened in his sanctum. How interesting. After these long years, my chase may finally come to an end. My nemesis awaits. Lord Luis, what is it about that bastard that fascinates you? Yeah, I won't let it end like this. I have to do better. I need more power. I will show Lord Luis I am worthy of his gaze. We'll soon be arriving above the royal capital. Excellent. As planned, increase altitude and enter the royal palace in the sky. Are you certain? We'll be heading directly to his majesty, the former king, and... Rest assured. That old fool is powerless to stop me now. Proceed. Understood. Let the final banquet begin. Come on, any takers? Any bets for the other candidates? Remember, if Luis loses, a silver coin could turn into mountains of rain. What are you trying to say? You think Count Luis is going to lose? Oh, no, of course not. I'll just say. I'll call that bet. All in on His Highness the Prince. <laughs> A scientist bigwig gambling away his tides. This really is the end of the world. Didn't know his esteemed princeliness had any supporters left. I mean, he's not really the prince, is he? Was actually a monster in disguise all along. Haven't you heard the news? The times we live in, I'll tell you. <sighs> Must be tough, being an easy mark. It didn't take much for you to buy everything Luis was selling about the prince. The fireworks went off the moment he said, Behold! Remember? You don't think there's any chance Luis orchestrated the entire thing? Oi, churchman! You've seen Count Luis lie to us! You think he cast some big illusion? <laughs> An illusion, eh? What if I said it's a power more dangerous than that? Always struck me as odd. We all know Luis, the mighty human slayer, but how does he keep finding the things one after another? Seems a bit convenient, if you ask me. Like he knows in advance where these monsters will appear to cause havoc. Easy to nitpick and gripe about him, isn't it, churchman? Maybe someone needs to shut you up. All right, all right. Let's keep things civil, eh? No sense becoming a monster yourself. Oi! What's all this fuss about? Damn it! When Count Luis is king, you'll all be the first at the gallows. You'll die just like Foden! Well, they're probably just as anxious as the rest of us. 
All that yelling and thrashing helps fight it off. Humans have been sighted near the capital, after all. It's more than that. Pockets of society have resented the upper class for ages now. But this might be the spark that lights the kindling. Luis's respect for power is certainly cruel, but it's fair to an extent. Those of us pushing the status quo have always struggled to understand the appeal. Even then, everyone's on edge. They'll jump at any excuse to argue and snarl at each other. Never seen it this bad. Not normal, I say. Blind fanaticism and doom go hand in hand. If we don't find some common ground soon, it'll collapse beneath us. Luis left saying that he'd be waiting at the royal capital. Only one place he could be. All eyes are on his Skyrunner as it rises to the Flying Palace. What are we about to see? Ah! The Royal Palace. It's been a while. Do you hear me, O oh King? Stubborn and deathless? This country is distorted. You and the other titled authorities decide who grows fat and who is devoured. The country knows no war only because our very core is built upon a system of societal predator and prey. It cannot be defied from within. That is peace, but not order. Hand over the royal scepter. The game is over. The country needs change, and I will provide it. Thou impertinent faith breaker, hast thou no shame in preempting the day of judgment? Do you presume yourself a god? Is that why you wrought your face in stone and took it to the heavens? You're nothing. Just an ordinary, broken old man. How wouldst thou wield the king's magic? To what end? To purify all that your kind have left to rot. You threw away your ideals, but I will never make that mistake. Only the people's chosen may take the throne. The royal scepter and its resting place remain beyond you. <laughs> this royal scepter, the royal magic, did you think that only generations of kings were aware of their secrets? Why someone can manipulate world-changing power by use of only a single scepter? Why only those supported by the people can use it? Listen well, O King. The truth behind the royal magic... Huh. So it's true. The country truly is putrid with sin. In other words, if I took hold of it now, then I would have the power to change the world itself. How didst thou learn of this? How? Thou art Elder. You were not always blind to this country's rot. When you visited our sanctum, I saw and knew the passion in your heart. And yet, what happened to our village? What happened to this country? Oh. You cannot stop me any longer. Nor can anyone else. Save one. No possibility. Snatching victory from the maw of catastrophe, the party descends again on the royal capital, Grand Tran. But they are greeted only by ominous skies. Their return hardly counts as a triumph, considering how they departed. Anticipating conflict, the Gauntlet Runner comes to a quiet stop. What the hell's wrong with the sky? Isn't that... Boy! That monster boy's come back! 
Ah, that's why the sky's grown so hellish. The half-dead bastard returns with his head held high. A more aggressive welcome than I expected. Would any introductions help them to understand? It's useless. Words are cheap. Still, we should walk with pride instead of trying to keep our heads down. True enough. His Royal Highness, the Prince, returns. Luis distorted his form through strange and terrible magics, but the curse is now dispelled. His true form has been restored. Boy, if that's really his highness, then tell us why in his majesty in the sky stop all his bloodshed. Because he's an imposter, just like Count Luis said. You're not fool us again, beast. Oi, calm down. At least listen. And you. Never thought I'd see one of the Madness Brothers standing against Count Luis, even the thick one. He took in a parapus like you, and you spit on him. Scum. Only thing traitors deserve is a tight rope and a stiff beam. And you want us to support the Prince? Lady Juno, I can't believe this. I admired you. Why would you risk dying alongside some fake Prince? I don't intend on dying with anyone. Besides, I'm still me, whoever I'm standing with. Hey, you chief! Weren't you the wretch who got kicked out of the knighthood? Now you're with this pack of throne chasers. Shame. Shame! Mustari girl! You ungrateful pagan! Count Luis brought down the Sanctus Church for you! How dare you strike out at him? They're all traitors, I say! What is all this? The truth of the Prince hardly matters to them. Every one of them's only concerned with their own emotions, and nothing else. We'll have your heads on pike soon enough. Leave! Get out of our royal capital! If they're just monsters, we can deal with them ourselves. How about it? This is bad. They really are out for our blood. Has everyone gone insane? Oi, over here! Don't bother with them! No talking this one out. You need to run. Now! We weren't away from the city that long. What happened? Why are all the people so bloodthirsty now? The prince turning into a monster before their eyes still lingers in their minds. After all, a monster entered into their society disguised as a person. No, that's not... I know. It's not true. But truth and how it appears to the citizens are different beasts. Moreover, humans have been sighted closer than ever before. The royal capital's populace is unused to danger, so they've become suspicious of each other. How fares your neighbor? Do you run in circles with monsters in disguise? Are questions on the tip of every tongue. Ever since Forden's death, Luis has everyone on a knife edge. He's erratic, and nobody knows how he'll react to those who defy him if push comes to shove. So, at the core of it, people are scared witless, and they cling to Luis as a savior, rather than the devil he is. You well know that Luis cares not one whit about social status, especially as a token of birthright. No amount of wealth or standing can buy his protection. So even those who may have opposed him at first now counsel that condemning him would be imprudent, as it puts their safety at risk. Then we're stuffed. He won't save anyone. And oh yeah, he can create humans, by the way. Oh, that's all true then. I have my suspicions, but it's still a bit of a jolt. This all said, in my humble opinion, what we're seeing in the people now has been in the works for some time. Now, has the tournament for the throne truly ever been a fair contest? The Sanctus Church bent it to its whim, and I abetted that. To my shame. Before I met you people, I didn't have much to me but anger and quips. I'd rant and snipe and have my cynical little discourse, but I'd only looked to others for change. Now, maybe that outlook's our real enemy. Blind fanaticism, like I had. Even if there's no malice to it, it's a dangerous thing. 
Hard to think clear when your mind's a muddy stream. We've been told Magla is born from people's anxiety. Perhaps the proof is now before our eyes. Kind of ironic. But we have to do something about it. If we don't, they'll never listen. We'll only ever be seen as an enemy. I had the inn prepared. They won't let anyone in but you lot. Let's head there for now, shall we? You made it back in one piece. Since you left, Luisa's following has only grown. Have you changed? You're still the same person, aren't you? It is quite a story, but it deserves explaining. I only hope you can believe us. You came to help everyone, just like you helped me before, right? Yes, that's right. On the other hand, it may well be bait for a trap. Trap or not? What to pick? new power. New skills, new possibilities. near, which shall see the crowning of a new king. Thirty-one days remain. To all the people who dwell in this land, this voice? Soon, naught but one month will remain. On the dawn of the Day of the Hero, the one who has inspired the greatest faith of the people shall inherit the kingdom. I bid thee forget not these words. Wasn't expecting to wake up to such a spectacle, but I suppose that confirms it. This is where it ends. Luis has already fortified himself behind the palace walls. Good thing we've got a Skyrunner. Or it'd already be over for us. Or perhaps... it is us he has been waiting for all this time. However disturbing the world looks now, 
Tis only a prelude to the Deadland Luis strives for. Sky looks proper hellish already. And with all the humans out there, it's no wonder everyone's losing their grip. Well, he wanted a fair world where strength decides everything. Funny how that's indistinguishable from absolute chaos. But it's Luis who has the most support right now. And that wasn't born of deception. He broke the nation's order, and everyone knows it. Come to think of it, what do we all stand for, really? Maybe... hope. A little broad, don't you think? I don't really know what everyone's talking about. But everyone who's seen you and your friends say you're amazing. You make them really, really happy. Because, you know, you've got all the tribes in your team. Everyone's different, but you keep working together and doing great. You're so cool. A fair point. You're quite right, Maria. It is a hard thing to word, so... Uh, forgive my fumbling. But perhaps... It is a matter of standing for something Luis does not believe exists. We must prove that it does. If you keep on believing in what you want, and you keep on working hard for it, it will come true. <laughs> That's right, love. I can think of plenty of people who would be much happier if they took a page from your book. So Luis is hiding in the floating royal palace here. We have to stop him. I won't accept King Luis. Let's... Here's where we are now. Let's put an end to this. So? Smash it all to base. All right. Where to? Luis is the only one. Danger here. Help me, will ya? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, boy. All right, then. Luis rightfully ought to be king. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's all right, then. Come to. Uh, Why, you little... Well, I guess that's the end. Will you fight for Count Luis? I be there! Luis is the only one left, isn't he? All right, then. Belongs to Lord Luis. <laughs> Lovely, that. Mission accomplished. All right. Belongs to Lord Luis. All right then. What? 
All right, then. Where to? face danger here. Don't go get yourself. Let's do it. Too. Let's go. <laughs> hey. 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 Let's go. Humans. Louise, I can see it. Well, let's take a moment to prepare. What will become of us? Hey! One in. Hey! One in. If Louise wins the crown, hmm. what will become of us? Hmm. All right, then. Where to? Ah. Let's go. Let's 
Let's take a moment to prepare. Thank you. Hello there. Thanks. Let's go. So, let's take a moment to prepare. All right, then. Okay then. Help me up. All right then. Let's go. What more can I do? No arm. Keep this to... Preparations up. Now then. And I think we have a favor to do there. Well, let's roll the... It's your call. Let's be off. What to pick? <laughs> Me, we go together.
I must wish a favor if I may. Let no one here fights alone. Let my power support you. We've got to wake her up. Let's try this. Time for my grand Let's combat. work together. No way. I'll cut through. Three left. One for the captain. Now we start. It's up. Settle for the a wise choice. I call upon a royal soul. Why do you see what No, I shall vanquish evil. evil. Now let's make an end of it. Ah! Take the tougher than I thought. Let's go. Finish them off. We're clear. Good. Clean victory. <laughs> The sight of Malva forms on the horizon, a small settlement carved out of the mountainous terrain of southern Ontario, prospering modestly without reliance on trade, in part thanks to a thriving dairy farm. The Ishkia tribe secludes itself here, avoiding outside clamor, as though ushered in by the bleeding of sheep grazing on a rock face, the gauntlet runner descends upon the quiet mountain village. Giving it some thought? Gauntlet Runner's slowing pace signals their arrival at an encampment to those below deck. They are grateful for these moments of repose, quietly acknowledging their good fortune, a rare glimpse into a party at peace. All right, then. 